recording. Okay, we are recording. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tom. What episode do you know? It's on the top uh, left corner. Episode one hundred. Did you know that? Uh, it's up in the corner. <laughs> well, I have no is, idea where we're on. This is episode one hundred. We've been doing this for almost two years. But apparently there's some milestone that when you hit 100, you must celebrate. And we don't have any, like, major thing going on. It's just we want to get this out to you before your commute on Thanksgiving or when you're tired and you're about to fall asleep with your family after eating turkey. And right before they say, hey, can you fix my computer? We want to be right there in that half hour or 15 minutes in double speed. So let's first say hi to Tom. Hi, to everyone. So... We really want to continue with that system building part two guide. So we did part one a few weeks ago. And you know what? We're right at that time where you're you're going to your family's house and they're going to ask you stuff. So if you listen to this, you're going to help with the second part of your system, like things that you're going to do. And it's going to really just ease into what do you have to do when, when your family says the thing doesn't work, whatever that thing is. And I think we should just go from there. Yeah, there's uh, there's always a laundry list of items for me to fix whenever I, uh, you know, go to see my uh, my family, and it's it's nothing bad. It's not that they're bad people or they break things, but you know, computers are tools. They break down, and uh, yeah, I'm the kind of guy that fixes them. And look, we all do this out of the goodness of our heart because you know what? It's really hard. You're trying to get people to use technology, and we keep on saying that. But if if it's not working for them, they're just going to default back to the old way, and you really don't want that. You want them to be able to experience what we experience and know how to keep secure and not have to worry about it. But if it doesn't work, then you know you're they're going to take it to to some sort of company that's going to do some weird things and over overcharge you and you know that it's not going to be done right and here you are ready to help and yes it's annoying but you know what it's very much worth it and they'll be happy and you'll be happy and you know that you'll do a good job yeah what what i always tell uh family members because i actually had my my grandmother say to me and this was years and years ago she said well i i don't want to bug you with problems i'll just you know i'll, I'll go down to uh a, you know a big box company and, uh, and and get the stuff taken care of and fixed because I know you're busy and I explained that no no if you take it to someone else and they fix it chances are they're not going to do it right or they wouldn't do it the way I would do it so I'm gonna have to come back and fix it again after undoing what they've already done to the system it's way better for me to just fix it the right way the first time it's less work for me well like the example is I think one of them charged thirty dollars to install a piece of software so let's take Microsoft Office first you have to have the legal license and the key and everything else which assuming you have and then you bring them you pay them thirty dollars but office throws all this nonsense in the next I don't know what's the thing next to the clock, the little area next to the clock, the notification center, and all this yeah. other stuff. And and then it's your job to remove it. So they're just essentially slowing the computer down more, whereas you would have taken the time to figure it out. You would have taken some icons off the desktop. You really don't need MSN Messenger that's outdated and remote desktop on. And the installation file, they'll probably leave there. So this is not everybody, but most likely this is what you're going to get when you bring it there. And they're going to they're going to do it as fast as possible, and they're not going to take the time. And uh, if they decide to do their security scan or uh, system health checkup, there's going to be an incredible number of utilities that are going to load on. Uh, some of which will bug you to come back to the store or bug you for you know paying the license fees. Uh, some of the tools they use actually make your system less secure because they've got poorly written applications and remote monitoring services and it's just badness all around so I'd, I'd stay away from that it's really easy to make a computer work right again uh, and you know it's even easier to set one up correctly the first time around which so, is why we're here at part two of system building so we got through Ninite, which was just to re recap it's a it's it's a utility on the internet you click on the software you want they give you the free versions they're packaged without the ask.com toolbar they're just they're streamlined so you don't have to go through uh, advanced support and they're pretty good they don't really really in fact they don't really put everything everywhere they put a desktop icon that you can simply remove and that's really about it so ninite you downloaded it you double clicked on it you ran you had lunch you came back everything's ready to go at least right now now what 
Now, let's talk antivirus. Um, this topic is uh, sort of controversial, even amongst people in the security community. Some people say, well, it's you know, better that you have something rather than nothing. Uh, other people say it's a just complete waste of system resources. I fall in between. Um, you know, the, the most gracious independent studies of AV software show that you're getting three to 5% effectiveness on you know, any threat that comes your way, right? Chances are the AV isn't going to do anything for you. Um, but it, it running Windows, you probably should have something. Um, luckily, Windows 10 uh, has got Windows or Microsoft Security Essentials built in. It's got Windows Defender automatically enabled. Windows 7 and above, it's got Windows Defender uh, I think you could add it in XP, uh, but you know, uh, Microsoft Security Essentials, it's free, it's from Microsoft, it tends to stay out of the way. No, it's not as effective as something like, uh, you know, Kaspersky gets thrown around a lot or a paid antivirus solution. But, uh, you know, when, when we're talking such a low margin, such a, a low uh, sort of effectiveness rating on even the best antivirus software, uh, security essentials isn't too bad of a thing to load on. It's lightweight, it's not going to get in your way, uh, and most importantly, it's not going to do anything nasty to your computer or browsers. Um, if you look at a lot of the free antivirus software, I, I want to single out AVG in particular, because it used to be great. AVG free was the antivirus you would put on computers. Uh, you wouldn't worry about paying for it because it stayed out of the way, and that's why it's doing what it's doing now. Uh, so AVG decided that uh, instead of, or in addition to, you know, bombarding you with these upgrade messages of, hey, you should probably pay for this sometime, uh, now they watch your browser history, uh, they, they watch your, your internet browsing, and uh, they ship it off to marketers. They, they literally sell your internet history uh, to people who pay for it. So that's not recommended. Uh, you know, I, I don't think they, they take screenshots of you or, or watch you through your webcam or anything really creepy. They just watch your internet history and ship that off to advertisers. So I totally stay away from that. Um, a lot of the free antivirus solutions do come with, you know, some toolbar or browser add-on or certificate suite that absolutely decimate the security of your browser. So stay away from that. If you have to pay for something, if you really feel like buying an antivirus, uh, ESET's not 32 has typically been okay in my book. Um, you know, I, I'm a Linux guy at heart. I, I run Linux on home on the majority of my systems. Uh, and on the few Windows systems I've got laying around, Security Essentials is more than enough for my needs. Well, if you listen to all our advice throughout the, the the hundred episodes, I mean, I'm at the point that I think security essentials, not running consistently, but running when you call it and doing your updates and watching your browser and what you download, you're, I think you're going to be fine because once the virus gets on, I don't think you can ever get it. You can get rid of it. And once you figure out that you have something, you're going to do a little more research into figuring out how really to get rid of it. And what it ends up happening is you're gonna have to go in and do some pretty, you're gonna have to get, you're gonna have to roll up your sleeves and do more than just click uh, fix and scan or scan and fix. So my big thing is I would like some sort of quick antivirus security essentials being native, being core to the OS in the corner that you could set it some cron job to run once a month while you're sleeping or on a Friday and that's it. and come in in the morning and be done with it. I, I do like Security Essentials Active Scan because it doesn't take a lot of resources to run. Uh, and let's say let's say you pick something up. Let's say you, you download a PDF and it goes, whoa, this is totally an exploit from three months ago because that's all AV catches is old stuff anymore. Um, because making malware, it, obfuscating malware, it has gotten trivial even for script kiddies today. Um, but, you know, if in case you come across something old, in case someone sends you a bad email attachment with an old exploit in it, Security Essentials would be like, oh, dude, you're not going to run this. We're not going to let you. Um, you know, when it comes to infection time, let's say you get blasted with something, you know you've got a virus. Um, okay, first thing to consider, this is the absolute first rule. Always remember this. Uh, you will never be able to trust that system again with that software set. 
um, yeah, you can clean it up. Yeah, you can get the removers. Yeah, you can run through all the you know the stuff in the registry manually if you're you're following the guide on Bleeping Computer, which is a great website by the way. I love those guys. Um, yeah, but just know that if malware wants to be persistent enough, it can evade you. Uh, and you know, Windows is a big, big place. Your computer is a big, big place. There are lots of places to hide, uh, and it can hide. But if you decide that you, you feel comfortable with trying to clean it and you don't want to wipe the computer back to the Stone Age, reinstall Windows, and recover your backups, um, two tools I like to recommend. Malwarebytes, free. Uh, their, their active scanning engine is, yeah, yeah, it's not bad. It's not great, but you know, Malwarebytes has a free download, which is great. Uh, so keep that on hand. Put it on your utilities disk that you carry around to your family's house. Um, and uh, Combo Fix. If Malwarebytes doesn't blast it, uh, give it a second punch with Combo Fix. Do not run Combo Fix first. It is It does horrible computers to try to fix it. Um, it is a good nuke option, uh, but you know, keep it in your back pocket in case Malwarebytes fails to do the job. I have had to pull it out occasionally for systems that didn't have backups to get them back into a working state, but it's not pretty. Well, Which probably probably brings us to uh, you know uh, one thing, uh, another tier of security, which is availability of your data and computing resources. Well, are we done? We're done with the virus. We're done with viruses. I right? think so. Right. Yeah. So I mean, again, it's you ask ten different people, you're going to get ten different opinions on virus scan. I think just the whole thing is to stay safe and and just to know what you're doing. And keeping, I guess the number one piece of advice is just keep your machine updated, right? It's I, I keep it updated. Make sure that you're actively paying attention to uh, to updates and and just don't be stupid. I mean, re that's really it. I was gonna say that it was kind of funny. So last week we, was, we said that some uh, the police department got body cameras infected with the Conficker worm, and all these AVGs archived their Conficker thing because it was no longer around, and now they had to rebuild it and re-put it in and push an update out, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, AV software is just like any other software. If you keep the old stuff laying around forever, your virus database is just going to get massive. It's going to bog down all your user systems. So you kind of take the old stuff and you archive it off and you move it off into, uh, you know, the, the part that doesn't get loaded uh, onto PCs. Um, but yeah, uh, so I, I do think that's all there is to be said about uh, antivirus. And yeah, there are a lot of opinions out there, but you know, you follow you follow these three big rules. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of rules in, in computer security. They're not hard and fast. It's just kind of opinions that I've seen work. Use a non-default browser that's common. It's got a big name behind it. So. Use Firefox or Chrome. Do not use Internet Explorer. Do not use Edge. Edge is getting better. I still don't trust it yet. Um, get rid of Java. You do not need it. Nothing uses Java. Not even Minecraft uses Java. Get rid of it. Trust me. You don't need it. Uh, and the other thing, uh, Flash. Get rid of Flash. Most things work without Flash. Uh, most things actually work faster and better without Flash. Uh, so get rid of it. Uh, if you're on Chrome, you definitely don't need it. Uh, if you're on Firefox, Try it. Um, most websites will have HTML5 support by now. Uh, but Chrome's actually got it built in, and Google manages the security of that plugin. Uh, so it's way safer than running a, uh, an installable version of it. They, uh, both of them have that, that Flash run, the run to Flash thing. So you have to right click and do run, which will, yep. by the way, f speed up your browser significantly. Yes, it will, by so, far. So absolutely, you want to do that. <clears throat> so, which which probably brings us to uh, the next part, which is, you know, okay, um, if now that we're avoiding the viruses, how do we make sure that, uh, you know, our data and our computer are always running? Well, the computer's a box of parts. Some of them can be moving. Uh, so it's not going to work all the time. Uh, and even if they're solid state drives, those don't work all the time either. Computers die. It happens a lot. Uh, so the best thing we can do is make a copy of the computer's brain, right? Get some backups going. 
Uh, and, you know, everyone, when you picture backup, they've got, you know, the, the external hard drive sitting on the desk plugged in and some sort of expensive utility running in the background, keeping track of everything. You can do it that way, uh, but it doesn't have to be expensive or crazy. And you don't really even have to have a, uh, an external hard drive to back stuff up, uh, not even securely. Uh, so if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to trust the cloud with your data, uh, which I do personally, I, I have a Carbonite account. Um, I've used Carbonite. I love it to death. They actually allow you to encrypt your data before it sends off to Carbonite, uh, and uh, or not Carbonite. I use CrashPlan. I have used Carbonite. Um, they both do the same thing. They allow you to encrypt the data before you ship it off to them. Uh, it keeps it nice and secure and locked up. Uh, it's they have varying costs, Carbonite, Mosey, CrashPlan. Uh, get one of those. Um, and I know CrashPlan in particular lets you send your backups to the internet, to CrashPlan's data centers. It also lets you pick a local storage option. So if you have an external hard drive that you want to back up to, CrashPlan will back up to that area as well. You can even back up to other computers on your account. It's pretty cool. Just, just be aware, you're going to hear this before Friday. So when you wake up Friday morning, especially Friday morning, look out, be on the lookout for Twitter deals. They've been known, both of them, CrashPlan and Carbonite, to offer Black Friday deals where you can get a year for 50% oh, yeah. off or whatever, whatever else. So you do want to definitely hear that. Somebody said this, and I know Tom's not necessarily going to agree with this, but it – Look, if you're trying to go cheap with your backup and you like cloud backup and you don't want to pay for CrashPlan or Mosey or Carbonite, think of the, what you actually need to back up. You need to back up your photos. Well, Google Photos is awesome. Same with Flickr. Even Amazon has a service there. Now, they're not encrypted. They're not really that secure, nor should, nor should you expect them to be. But if you're trying to find a spot to, let's say, back up your photos, there's one. Uh, Google Music, well, you can upload everything there uh, to Google Music and do it. Again, not secure, not this. But it, it's a different service. It's it's there. And if that's what you're trying to do, then then think of it that way. So then what you're left with are just your documents. And your documents are small. You can get a flash drive. You can encrypt You can encrypt it, then throw it on all the services, on uh, on Dropbox, on, on SpiderOak, on OneDrive, on Google Drive, because it's encrypted and you can keep it there. So if you want to go the really, really cheap route and do it that way, and you know what? It may not be the worst idea in the world because Google Music, it's there. You know it's there. Or if you're like me who actually buys CDs, not CDs still, but uh, digital music, it's in your, in my case, my Amazon locker that I can just always download. Yeah, using the online services, especially Google Music, has saved me tons of backup room as well as, you know, usable hard drive space every day. All of my music is locked up in Google Music. Now, if Google Music goes away, there's going to be a lot of, you know, pain and agony that I go through. But I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, Google doesn't shutter that service really abruptly and not give me a chance to, to export. I mean, even with something like Google Reader that they shut down, they did say, hey, everyone, uh, if you want your feeds, they're over here. Go get them because we're shutting down in X amount of time. So we'll have some time to, to kind of go over it and, and prep. Um, but yeah, the online services, especially Google Photos, really great. Um, you know, I, I personally, I don't have an issue with Google. Um, I don't have an issue giving them uh, photos or music or you know encrypted vaults with my documents in it. Um, so they're they're great options, and in many cases they're free. Uh, and you know, if you want more space, I know Google Drive is stupidly cheap. Um, you know, speaking of Crash Plan. Um, I don't want to make this a, a crash plan advertisement. They're not paying us, but you know, I, I think I pay 150 bucks a year for their unlimited data family plan. And their family plan says, hey, you get 10 computers to add to your account to back up online, you know, to, to our data center. Uh, unlimited data, just set it up, log in, and it'll run in the background. Uh, it's been a fantastic deal. I've got all of my computers, all of my wife's computers. Uh, are totally covered by that one plan, and we're, you know, five computers into it. And if you decide to go local storage, and again, like you said, with the hard the external hard drive on the desk, not only back it up, and we, and I do recommend that I don't have a specific software, a complete clone. So 
So you can put it somewhere and then you need, you need to st restore from a backup. You're not having to find the disc and everything. You're making a complete clone of it. I guess they call that ghosting the drive, but either way you find that, put it somewhere and you're good, but always test the backup drive. Somebody always told me this. If you don't test the backup drive once a month or whatever it is, then you really don't have a backup. And not only that, make sure it's on a schedule that it always does this because you're never, ever going to remember to back up your hard drive. It just doesn't work. You're never going to remember, oh, I'm not, I'll am not. i do it while I'm on the computer. No, that's the last time you want to do it because it, it does take cycles and it's going to slow you down. Yeah. Um, you know, I, for, I, I talk to a lot of you know, parents shipping their kids off to college for the first time and you know, they want to make sure, well, you know, what, they've got all these important papers and homework documents and research on their computers. I want to make sure they keep it backed up. So I'm giving them, you know, this tiny hard drive that I'm going to tell them to plug it in every night. That's that's never going to work. They're never going to back that up. Uh, it's it's absolutely never going to get backed up. It might get backed up the first night when you do it, uh, but after that, do not count on a backup being there. Uh, if they have to think about it, if uh, you know you have to. Uh, actually plug something in or do something to kick off a backup, it will never happen. Uh, you know, my backup application, my local application on this computer runs once a day. You know, whether I tell it to or not, it's, it wakes up and it goes, oh, I haven't backed up in 24 hours. I should probably do that. I never think about it, and it saved me because I've had drives die. And it's annoying. i got to go out to, to the store and buy a new drive, but slap it in, hit recover, and it all streams back onto the disk. There's not a lot of heartache except for, you know, losing a day of swip, uh, swapping out a hard drive and recovering some data. Now, you lose, you know, 10 years of family photos, that's a tragedy, and that's what we're trying to prevent. So uh, it, there's a 3 two, one rule. Again, so many rules. Um, you know, three copies of your data. That means two backups and one original on your hard drive, right? Three copies of the data, uh, two different storage mediums, uh, and one of them off-site. What you don't want to have happen is something really tragic like a house fire totally destroying not only your computer but all of your backups as well. Uh, you know, keeping DVDs in the closet is great. That's a great form of backup, or at least it was when DVDs were the hotness. Uh, but if they burn if they melt. They're as good to you as the melted computer. So, you know, if your offsite is backing up to a hard drive and giving that to you know your brother or in-laws or some other place that's away from your house, disconnected, that's fine. Just make sure it's somewhere outside of you know a burnable area. And I, I think I want to finish with backups. The last thing, as a school teacher, what I teach my students is, is us being a Google Apps for Education school, is you know what? Save your files to your Google Drive or to your Dropbox. This, does, this has a negative side effect, but the main benefit of this is you never have to worry about saving. It has version control built in. Dropbox does that. So if you're using Google Docs, it saves it there, so it's always backed up. If you're using Word, you're using a different program, instead of saving something to the desktop, put your Google Drive or Dropbox folder right on your desktop. Save right to that, and by doing that, you'll always have a backup. I mean, again, this is not secure. This is not, don't expect security or privacy, but you have a backup. And then from there, you can do everything else. But the good part is both lit, both Mac and Windows have their, their uh, set it and forget it type backup plan, whether it be Time Machine, and I forgot the Windows one, but it's there and it's ready to I go. Think, I think it's just called Windows Backup, if I'm not mistaken. It's a fairly generic sounding name, but you know, I've, I've used it. I've set it up for people. I've recovered from it. It's foolproof. It's fire and forget. You say, hey, Windows, just back up on, you know, after X amount of time and after, you know, whatever you set it for, a week, a day, an hour, it'll kick off a backup. And, uh, you know, most backup systems are semi-intelligent. They're not going to take the whole drive and port it over unless you tell it to do that. Most of them don't do it by default. It'll, it'll instead say, okay, well, we've backed up the whole drive, but only, you know, these six files have changed. So we're going to take the six files and back those up. It's, it's called a, a delta backup or a difference backup. It's only going to take the parts that change and back those up. So what it can do is it can just take the whole image, plop it down, and then take the six files that changed and put them right back there. Uh, it makes backups really fast. Uh, it does have to do a full backup every once in a while just for safety in case the original image gets corrupted. But that's 
more backup theory and, and data storage. So backups do it. Okay, after backup, so you made your image, you have your backup. Anything else? I mean, have fun. So you've you've got your AV, you've set up your browsers, you've gotten rid of Flash and Java. Um, I would say uh, load Emet, uh, E M E T. Uh, it's a fantastic Microsoft tool. Uh, it is free, and um, it's not. I, I don't want to say it's like an, an easy tool for everyone to use. Uh, it's definitely more on the techie side of things, but it does a lot of cool security things to Windows that just tears apart the behavior of most malware by default. Uh, it's not antivirus. It doesn't really work that way. Uh, it, I'm trying to explain it in a good way friendly, easy grasp way, but it's hard. Uh, just know that it's really great for security, uh, and it'll tear apart some of the, the more nasty malware that you could be hit with out there. Uh, so uh, Emet, great thing to set up, E-M-E-T. Uh, it's a free download from Microsoft. You don't have to pay for it. Um, and yeah, yeah, I, I think that would be it. If you're on Windows 10, uh, you know, SpyBot uh, put out this great utility called SpyBot Beacon. Uh, it is free. It's, they're not charging a dime for it. Uh, and it blocks a lot of the tracking that uh, Microsoft has baked into Windows 10. So if you have Windows 10, uh, if you jumped into it, uh, run SpyBot Beacon. It'll block a lot of things. Now, if you're using Cortana or one of the other, you know, Microsoft features that needs that type of data, it's probably not going to work. Um, so just be aware of that. They do have different levels you could set it at, but um, I haven't seen anything on the uh, the Windows 10 box we've got here at the house. So I haven't seen anything negative come from it. Look, a lot of this stuff is is you started listening to us, you, you were using a computer, now you're setting up from scratch, and this is all stuff that you should be starting with right from the beginning, and you'll be happy. As soon as you understand this is the best way to do it, the best way to move forward, you're gonna be, you're gonna think, why haven't you done it always like this? And why haven't other people done this? It takes, an, and, I, and I say this a lot, I call it the 45 minute rule. If you spend 45 minutes learning whatever device you're on, you at least know what it can and can't do. And if there's more you need to know, you spend another 45 minutes. And I tell that with people, your computer isn't this, I mean, yes, your computer is difficult to understand for the most part, but if you give yourself 45 minutes, you can learn just about most of the features to a point that you say, oh, I know I have it, I know how to look it up, or you know what, I don't really need this, I should learn to not use it, or why it's there, or anything like that. So you did all this, try to pass that information on, you're at Thanksgiving, don't, don't, don't get political with it, but just, hey, let me show you how to spend 45 minutes to learn your new phone or to learn your new computer, to learn how it works and to go from there. And I think you're going to get a lot further than than uh, having than, than saying, okay, leave me alone for a few hours and let me fix it. Right. Uh, yeah, one thing that just totally pops into my head, uh, you block origin uh, for Firefox and Chrome. It's an ad blocker. Um, you know, we, we see a lot of zero day attacks. We see a lot of drive by downloads for malware that just streams in through ad networks. Um, you know, it's not the fault of the website. Uh, it's usually the fault of the ad maker for letting that stuff through or the browser or uh, there's, there's a lot of parties that you could blame for stuff getting through advertising. Uh, but you block origin, um, you know, it blocks the ads. So they are not a vector. Um, and it really speeds up your browser uh, by a crazy amount. Uh, and it's, it's easy to use. It's a one-click, turn it on, one-click, turn it off sort of deal. Uh, it's fantastic. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and then we, we should mention, uh, and this, of course, you know, decentsecurity.com uh, has uh, just great tutorials. Check them out. Um, but they've got this little section on registry cleaners, which we really have to mention uh, because, you know, I've known this, but it's something that we really don't talk about. When you're looking for computer fixes or ways to speed up your machine, a lot of the time, you know, someone will pitch a registry cleaner to you. Uh, hey, run this. Oh, look, it, there's this giant list of problems. Click this magic button to fix it. Do not use them. Registry cleaners lie. 
they have the uh, you know a insane ability to do incredible amounts of damage, like make your computer not boot uh, anymore, kind of damage, not permanently. Like you'll have to wipe Windows, kind of not boot anymore. Um, it's just it's bad news all around. Do not use registry cleaners. Don't let your friends or family use registry cleaners. Uh, and believe it or not, I think that's all I have for today. Well, we want to keep it. We want to keep it right before your Thanksgiving. Not short, but we want to give you some information, and we'll come back next week with with more hard hitting details, and we'll just go from there. Let's end it. We'll see everyone next week. Bye, everyone. See everyone.